question is, well, how about the compressive forces on the spine? I mean, is that, should that be a concern? And I think that there are a small number of clinical cases where you can, are concerned about. But the majority of it, no, uh, not that concerned. Here's why. Because the annulus fibrosis is built for compression. The, the bulk of it, the way that it's structured, that, the, it, that its, its function is really uh, to absorb compression. Now, if you've got uh, you know, a spine, again, where you're, you're concerned that somebody has discogenic problems, discogenic nerve root, where increased compression is problematic, I, I think you have to be very concerned, uh, be, be concerned with that. On the other hand, if you've got a patient that has a stenotic spine, and it's the posterior elements you know, that are really you're concerned about compression, I think that patient, you're, you want them in a flex position lifting all the time. You don't want to teach them you restore low doses or anything like that because in, because of this very question. Compressive loads to a degenerated posterior arch is, is very problematic for the individual. Same, same, same thing. I, 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 like I said, I think it's built for that. It's built for that. That compre compression is stability. I mean, that's. Really, especially when we look at these unstable spines, is squeezing it together, for lack of a better word, that's what, that's what the stability is. Exactly. The, the comment was made in regards to, you know, taking Nakamsen's work about disc pressure and, you know, and then translating it into the clinic. When you look at disc pressure, okay, in terms of what is the biggest cause of increasing disc pressure, the hierarchy goes like this. It's the, 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 the biggest influence on this pressure is muscle contraction. That's number one. Because all these muscles run north-south. And so, you know, the, it's, it's the contraction of the, of the psoas attached to the, to the uh, lumbar vertebrae that squeeze it together. It's the contraction of the superficial, deeper spinae multifidus squeezed together. That's the number one um, influence to this pressure. Number two is the um, uh, um, ligamentous pre-stress. What I mean by ligamentous pre-stress is that all your ligaments are, that, you know, if you, if you think of anterior longitudinal, posterior longitudinal, ligament and flavum, et cetera, et cetera, they have a certain pre-stress to them already. So there's some give, but they're always pulling the vertebrae down apart. And then the last is superincumbent forces. So it's weight and position. Those are actually last influences. So when you look back at, at all the disc uh, work and the disc work, pressure work that's been done recently, what you notice is it's the state of muscle contraction that results in the increased disc pressure. So for example, me bending over like this to, uh, and this having a higher disc pressure than this, is not because I'm like this, but it's because this position has increase muscle contraction, and this position doesn't have muscle contraction. Or if I take this position here, this pressure is x, but if I hold five pounds in my hand out here, this pressure is x plus y. It has nothing to do with the position. It has everything to do with how much muscle contraction is, is uh, present. Sitting, sitting is, the question is sitting and standing. The reason sitting has a higher disc pressure than standing is because when you're standing, you distribute compressive load 80% to the bone disc bone interface, 15-20% to the facet joints. When you sit, you shift your weight line forward and you bring about 95% to 100% compressive load over the bone disc bone inter interface and there's an unloading of the facet joints. That's why disc pressure is slightly higher in sitting than standing. 